Despicable Me is one of those movie franchises which comes seemingly out of nowhere but ended up having so much success that one wonders why they didn't do it before. Maybe we're just leaving the golden age of computer animation and CGI and that's why we have so many quality films that use this technology. It is I, Cruz. This is a franchise that started back in 2010 and has given us three main movies so far, Despicable Me 1, 2, and 3, and a series of prequels about the Minions, one in 2015 and one to be released this very year in 2022. And we're not even counting the 15 animated shorts related to this universe. To say that Despicable Me has been a success is an understatement. If we add up the total box office of the franchise, we end up with a whopping $3.7 in revenue against a total inversion of $299 million, or roughly a 1,200% profit margin. So if you had any doubts we would have more upcoming films from this universe, you shouldn't doubt anymore. Because franchises like this sells, and numbers like this guarantee the continuity of Gru's and the Minions' adventures. We only need to remember that the third movie ended up in an open note, making us understand that the rivalry between Gru and Drew can only be extended in time. Drew has some things to prove, and Gru, as a reformed villain and member of the Anti-Villain Association, has some arrest to make alongside his wife. We have seen that every movie is basically different than the movie before in creating a richer story and world build, so we can say without fear of being mistaken that Despicable Me 4 will be different. Let's check out what we know so far. This time, we don't need to guess about a possible release date because both Universal Pictures and Illumination Entertainment recently announced that the new sequel for the main saga, simply titled Despicable Me 4, will be released on July 3, 2024. By this point, we are so advanced into the franchise and its lore, the return of the original cast is a must and the study knows it. Especially with Dr. Nefario accidentally freezing himself in carbonite. That is why we will be having practically the whole cast return to their roles. According to IMDb, we can count with the return of Steve Carroll, who voices Gru since the first movie, Kristen Wiig as Lucy Wilde, Gru's wife, Steve Coogan as Silas Ramsbottom, and Miranda Cosgrove, Diana Geyer, and Neve Sherelle as Margot, Edith and Agnes, respectively. In the creative team, we have Chris Renowned directing once more. He was responsible for the direction of Despicable Me 1 and 2. He also directed The Secret Lives of Pets 1 and 2 and The Lorax, among other animated movies. In the writing department, the screenwriter Mike White has been announced as responsible for the script of Despicable Me 4. Even though this is a very accomplished and awarded screenwriter, we have our doubts about this, since we can see things as the emoji movie were among his his previous works. And boy, that wasn't a good movie at all. Let's hope this becomes one of his good works. But what about the plot for this new movie? The third movie ended in a very unusual way, totally open for a sequel and on a completely ambiguous tone, hinting that the next film would dive deeper in the Gru vs. Drew dynamic once they established them as complementary personalities – white vs. black, reformed vs. corrupted, yin vs. yang, skilled vs. clumsy, or bald vs. hairy. You get it, Gru and Drew are opposites, and that gives us a lot of possibilities to experiment with. Even though Drew and Gru are brothers, it's clear that Lucy will play an important role in enforcing the commitment she and Gru have with the Anti-Villain League now that they both got their jobs back. Ooh, maybe we'll have the twin thing when you can read each other's mind. Drew is just starting his personal quest for an identity and this is mostly tied to his idea of becoming a villain to honor the heritage of his father, once known as the Bald Terror, who saw Drew as a total disappointment for his utter lack of villainous skills. But after breaking into the complex with Gru and successfully completing the Diamond Heist, something awoke inside Drew, the hunger and the adrenaline associated with being a thief and a villain. By the end of the movie, Drew even counseled the support of most minions who decide to follow him given that that they too have this desire for adrenaline and adventure and they cannot fulfill it anymore as Gru's minions since, well, Gru simply isn't a villain anymore. We think that this is an interesting arc to explore and that choosing this route has a potentially high emotional payoff for the protagonist as it forces them to face complex issues such as loyalty, personal decisions, identity, and family ties. 
One of the most interesting details we can find in the cast announcement is the return of Steve Coogan as Silas Ramsbottom. Although it may seem a forgettable detail at first, if we think about it a little longer, it raises a lot of questions. Do you remember Sheep's Butt? Sorry, I mean Mr. Silas Ramsbottom. He was the director of the anti-villain league in Despicable Me 2. But in the third movie, we see how he is retiring from service and is rudely dismissed and humiliated in front of his peers by his hideous new female director, Valerie Da Vinci, who ends up firing Gru and Lucy from the AVL. You're fired! <gasps> what? That's totally not fair! Gru is a great agent! Okay, so putting the pieces together, we have a probable cause here, or at least a reasonable suspicion. We might think of a scenario where Silas, feeling resentful for the way he was treated, plans a revenge on the AVL and becomes a villain. Wouldn't that be ironic? We would become the very thing he used to fight for. Given that all the movies have had a center villain besides the main conflict, Vector, El Macho, Balsahar Brat, it could be a super plot twist if at some point of Despicable Me 4 we discover that the bad guy is no other than Mr. Ramsbottom. It could be like Dr. Nefario's treason all over again, but less predictable of course because we all saw that one coming. We are now reaching the end of the video, but we are going to leave you with one last wild idea. What if we move forward in time and Despicable Me 4 actually shows us the girls' future? One can imagine that they have grown up a bit and have different and conflicting interests. One wants to join the AVL and just be like her adoptive father, one wants to be more like a spy inspired by her mother's antics and gadgets, and the last one just happens to develop the thrill for villainry just like his adoptive father had back in the days. Would that count as annoying? Are you excited about another film from this franchise? Do you have any theories or ideas for your own possible plot for the movie? Let us know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to receive more awesome content like this. You can share this content with your friends and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!